Heim Bloom, the Chief Baseball Officer of the Boston Red Sox, joins us this morning on the Harbor One Hotline. Hey, Heim, how you doing? Doing okay. If we're going to break uh, my personal Greg Hill show curse this season, we might as well do it against the best team in the National League, right? <laughs> I know. How about it? I mean, uh, this team, uh, eight games over five hundred, uh, seven and 4 since the All-Star break. So I, I, I'll start off and ask, are you – are you seeing anything different, or is this just baseball? Well, you know, some of it is baseball. It's it's 162, so there's going to be ups and downs. Uh, but, you know, look, a lot of this is, is happening because, uh, you know, a lot of young players and players that we want to step up and be, be a part of this core, they're doing that. They're, they're getting better over the course of the season. They're learning. They're growing. Uh, it's obviously not just them. We've gotten great contributions from all over the roster, but – uh, that's really what we're hoping to see. It's what we need to see, and uh, that has been behind a lot of why we uh, play better baseball. Well. Um, Alex Cora said last night that Alex Verdugo is the best defensive right fielder in the league. Um, I'm sure you agree. Um, what uh, what what made what what changed this year to last year uh, when it comes to where he is right now? Well, you could see it. You know, the first day he walked into camp, just how he prepared in the off season. I think he put himself in. in such better position uh, to have a good year. And, and that defense has showed up uh, really since day one. Um, you know, and he said it, uh, Doogie said it just last year. I don't think physically he was uh, himself. And there's different reasons for that. Some of the, some of those he controlled and some of them, you know, he was a little banged up last year too. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's nothing we haven't seen before. Obviously we saw, we saw this in 20 in right field. We saw it in 21 in left field. Uh, and, you know, 22, we had an off year in that regard in terms of just the range, in terms of the arm, uh, his tools play on both sides of the ball. And he just put himself in a much better position uh, this year to go out and, and bring that every day. And, and he saw it last night. I mean, obviously, you know, he, he hasn't been uh, hitting the way that he usually does the last couple of weeks, uh, but he steps in there and makes a huge defensive play that was critical in that game and, and helped us hang on and win it. Hi, one of the biggest questions people ask is whether or not you guys are going to be buyers or sellers. Um, and when you look at this season versus last, we, I kind of talked about it. Last year through the first uh, 11 games in the second half of the season, you guys were 4-7. and seven. This, year, this season you're 7-4. and four. Does that now play a factor into being buyers, especially when you're only a game and a half out of one of those wild card spots? Well, it's obviously put us in better position. Um, you know, and we just talked about this. I mean, there's going to be ups and downs, so you don't want to put too much weight on, you know, what just happened. Obviously, all the games count. Um, but, you know, the big thing here is, you know, like, like I said, it's just you know, a lot of good things are happening because uh, this core is coming together because, you know, players who we're counting on to be big parts of this thing are stepping up and just getting better every day. And it's been the result of really – you know, trying to hang with these guys, you know, trying to build it the right way, trying to give opportunity to the right guys and, uh, you know, just, just staying focused on, uh, on really building this. And so you're taking that mindset in the trade deadline. You know, we want to, we want to look for, for guys that fit and guys who can uh, be a part of this thing going forward. Um, and, you know, make sure that we're, you know, we're staying with, with, with the guys that we believe in and, and going out and making moves we believe in. Hi, Alex uh, addressed remarks he made back in the beginning of July about, you know, wanting to play in October and how many games you win in October being really all that matters. Uh, he said it's not about how many prospects you have or where your farm system is. A lot of people took that and ran with it thinking it was a shot at you. He said yesterday it wasn't. What did you take away from those remarks? I, I think if you listen to everything he said, uh, it was actually the opposite of that. I think, you know, that was in response to a question asking about, you know, young players actually showing up and, and doing it on this stage this year. Uh, you know, that's, that's consistent with everything, you know, we've been talking about here this morning. Uh, you know, obviously we've been talking about this for a long time, really since I got here about, you know, you know, there's obviously change over time in baseball, but in order to win and actually win, get to October and then win in October, you need to do that, you know, with a core of players, um, you know, that, that comes together and that's championship caliber. We've been talking about that for a while. We're not there yet, obviously. You just look at that scoreboard, you can tell we're not there yet. But the arrow is pointing in the right direction because it isn't just something you have to close your eyes and dream on. Now. You're seeing it more and more. You're seeing it on the field at Fenway. You're seeing it happen in the big leagues. 
Um, and that's been the result of, you know, trying, you know, to build this thing uh, step by step. And now it's showing up. Uh, obviously, we still got work to do, right? We're not even in a playoff position yet. But the good things have happened because these guys are now doing it in the big leagues. That potential is turning into reality. Um, you know, that's a step by step process. Uh, it doesn't happen through shortcuts. It happens through doing it the right way, but it has to happen for us to win. And that's happening now. Uh, we just need it to continue to happen. So then when it, when it comes to doing, for instance, the Kike deal for a couple prospects, was he not a core guy? Well, you know, some of that, I think, really, when you look at it, uh, you know, it's, it's that really, to me, is a baseball trade, right? We were in a position earlier in the season, we were in a position where we, we were scouring the earth for middle infielders. We got to a point uh, with, with Pablo getting healthy, uh, with, you know, obviously Trevor on the horizon, where all of a sudden we were in a position uh, of strength there, a position of surplus. Uh, we were going to have a move to make. And, you know, emotionally, that was obviously really tough. Like, it's not like we sit there and say, these guys are core guys, these guys aren't. I mean, Kike is at the heart of everything. Uh, that we've done here the last few years, uh, you know, obviously, as I don't need to tell you guys, I don't need to tell our fans what he's meant here. Uh, this year hasn't gone the way uh, that he wanted, that we wanted. But you know, his work this off season, uh, recruiting some of the guys that we brought in who play huge roles for us, uh, was a big part of why we are where we are. We just got to the point where you know we had a lot of guys, we we had some redundancy there. And at the same time, uh, we were able to bring in uh, guys that might be able to help us sooner rather than later. Nick Robertson's already pitched in the big leagues. Uh, he's proven just about all you can ask to prove at AAA. Obviously, he hasn't had much big league opportunity yet, but this is a guy that we can envision helping us in the position of need in the near future and then hopefully being someone that we carry forward. With us. So it just checked a lot of boxes for us. Um, and, you know, the Dodgers were in a different situation where they obviously had uh, – had some relief depth and, and they were looking for uh, for right-handed hitters that can move around the field. So it's just something that is a baseball trade that seemed to fit everybody's needs. Hi, Bloom is our guest front office report this week. I have a question for you from my guy, baseball Brett. Uh, last year at the deadline, Sam Kennedy said that you as an organization were trying to thread a tiny needle uh, between making a push and making solid moves to build depth in the organization. Um, it, it seems like you're at that same spot this year. Um, and does that, uh, experience last year, uh, change the way you're going to approach it this year? Well, standings wise, obviously the position that we're in, although it's better, it's not that different. I think the way we've gotten here is different. Obviously I know last year, you know, part of what made last year, a really emotional time was we were at a point of transition, right? With a lot of veteran players where a lot of things were uncertain, um, you know, we were working on building that core, but it was not as visible on the field as it is this year. So, you know, we've, we've gotten where we've gotten this year in large part because we have tried to do the right things. We've just tried to focus on getting better every day and making the moves that make sense, which sometimes are moves that grab headlines and sometimes they're not, but we're focused mostly on making moves that make sense and, uh, you know, not trying to take some, not trying to take shortcuts uh, to that, not trying to, not trying to deviate, not trying to offer them, you know, from our plan. Uh, and we're seeing the results of that. You know, we've gotten here because, you know, we've been focused uh, on building the right way and, and, and winning while we're doing it. And, you know, that's going to continue to be our focus. Obviously, there's always different considerations in play. But, you know, we know as, as much as we think we've got this thing pointing in the right direction, the arrow is pointing up. You know, we're also not there yet. So we want to keep pushing, keep getting better, and just try to do it the right way. Hi, I said I know you say that you guys are not there yet and you're you're trying to push in the right direction. But when you look at the AL, do you look at it from an organizational standpoint and go and all right, the teams that are ahead of us and the AL is wide open other than really the Red Sox and the Astros, you guys are the only ones that have kind of proven that you are playoff battle tested. Does that factor into your approach and just your the the your your feel in any way that the AL is wide open, and, and there are teams that are ahead of you, but if you can get into the dance, it's basically you might have the leg up because of your ex experience of being there before to, um, compared to others that haven't? 
you know what? It really just matters how you how you play when you get there. Obviously, you got to get there first. That's just how baseball is. I think more so than a lot of sports, you just have to look at at, at this over over the course of time. You get in, you play well, you can win it. Uh, it's always wide open. Now, look, it's also really good. There's a lot of really good teams in the American League. There's a lot of really really good teams in the American League East. Um, you just have to grind it out, do the right things, and, and, and keep the arm pointing in the right direction. There are no shortcuts through the 162 games of the baseball season. Um, you know, the game will find the, the, the way the regular season works is that, you know, it's, it's long enough, it's, uh, it takes a toll on you, right? And it's, it's, it's going to expose any weaknesses you have, and you've got to put yourself in a position to have a lot of, uh, a lot of ways to get through that. But yeah, I mean, look, it's, there's a lot of really good teams. Uh, some inexperienced teams sometimes catch fire at the right time. You know, sometimes experience, you know, sometimes what goes with that is that guys run out of gas. It's different every year. So you just got to focus on putting yourself in a position to win as many games as you can and then get in and then get hot. Hi, is it surprising to you that the Angels took Shohei off the trade market? You know, look, I, I you know, I've obviously not my place to speak for them. Um, Again, we're kind of seeing it sort of in kind of this kind of microcosm the last two weeks of what happens over the course of the, se- of the season. Um, there's ups and downs. So, you know, one week goes a certain way and everybody thinks that they know what teams are going to do. And then the next week goes a different way and the perceptions change. You know, I think, again, I look at it from our perspective. Obviously, we ride the roller coaster emotionally, but as far as, you know, what, what you're trying to do, what you're trying to build, what you're trying to execute on, you know, you can't, uh, Zig, zig and zag every single day based on what happened the night before you got to stay with with what you believe in and you know obviously that's what they're doing too they're following uh you know what they believe in and and uh you know they're they're a good team like like i said there's a lot of good teams in this um obviously we had their number when they came in early in the season then we went out there and they swept us um there's there's a lot of talent there uh they're a little beat up right now but uh they're very very dangerous all right Well, it's getting exciting, and thanks for joining us this morning, and we will talk to you soon, and hopefully uh, the jinx has been broken, and next time we'll talk to you after a win, I hope. (laughs) Sounds good. Let's hope so. All right. Heim Bloom and the Red Sox front office report.